Hello 2020 Design users and welcome to this webinar on 2020 Design version 12. I hope you are as excited as I am with version 12. So who am I? I am Santiago Morales. I am the Product Manager of 2020 Design. My role is somewhat to be the intermediary between the design community, the design user community, and the development team here in Laval Office of 2020 Technologies. So whenever I come and go see you, I, I take notes, whatever you have in terms of requirements, concerns, or good feedback, and I take all this back and try to crunch it into meaningful requirements for our development team. All right, so before we get started, um, we have again this year happening at KBIS. So for those who are coming to the KBIS, you should know that we are having another VIP customer event. This will be happening the Monday of that week, Monday the 20th of January, if I recall. So that's a fun day of activities where we'll, we'll be having a lot of presentations. You'll be able to mingle with other design users and meet actual 2020 staff. So I think there's a delegation of around 2020 people from 2020 technologies that will come down. And as you may know, this is our year, 2020. So if you haven't registered, please go ahead and register and come and see us at KBIS in Las, beautiful Las Vegas. So. The link to register is down at that page, 2020spaces.com slash celebrate. Okay? Here we go. 2020 Design version 12. Yes, it's already available for you guys. It's ready to be downloaded from 2020.net. Uh, and we saw already some traffic. People are starting downloading and trying it out. And so far, I'm getting a lot of great feedback. So if you haven't done so, this is your opportunity. You can go ahead and download from 2020.net site. So what are the main capabilities of V12? So the main one, which is what took us the most time, this is why V12 took a long time in the making, is we spent uh, close to two years to try to migrate our architecture that was 32-bit onto a 64-bit architecture. Now you might want to ask, why is that important to us, Santiago? Well, the main reason is because being a 32-bit uh, application the way we were before, we were limited to the amount of memory that we could access from the computer. And you might have noticed some of these issues where, that you might have encountered when working with larger projects that contain textures, larger textures, or many items. Well, now that we've migrated to 64-bit, we can now handle a lot more memory. So you're not going to come across all those issues. So it's, it's a huge gain for you and for us. So you, again, you'll be able to get, create larger designs. You'll be able to use a lot more textures. And you'll be able to uh, create perhaps uh, additional rooms in your project. So those are the capabilities that are now within reach with the 64-bit application, V12 2020 design. What else? The 3D warehouse, as you might have noticed on V11, uh, we weren't able, you weren't able to access the latest models of SketchUp. You'll be able to access the 3D warehouse so as you were able to before. You'll be able to download and access the latest models. So what are the latest models? So we're talking about 2017 models, 2018 models, and 2019 models. So for those of you who are not familiar, let me just quickly go into 2020 design. And I go into the items tab. We had the SketchUp button. That button was always there for, for the longest time. But now what's new with version 12 is that, like I said, you'll be able to download the latest model. Some of you might have noticed that you, from now on, you'll, be able to, you'll need to sign in to the 3D Warehouse. Make sure that you sign in with the uh, signing predictions of the 3D Warehouse and now 2020 in design. And once you do sign in, you'll have the same uh, page, web page. And you'll be able to browse through any models on the 3D warehouse. So if I'm looking for a stool, I'll bring up my stool page. And if I go and download that stool, you'll now see that I have all these models that I had trouble accessing with the previous version of 2020 design. Now with V12, I can select the latest and greatest, download that item, and place it on my floor plan. Yeah, so this is huge. I'm sure a lot of people are going to appreciate being able to do this again with 2020 design. Screen presets. That's very neat uh, functionality. 
as you might see, you might notice the configuration of my windows is somewhat different to what you're used to. Right now I have my information box, my placement box here on the left hand side with the local browser browser. And oh, just a quick note. What is a local browser? Well, it's namely the, uh, what you've called the uh, drag and drop uh, box. Now we've re renamed it the local browser. Why? Because now we have also the cloud browser, which essentially does the same thing. You'll be able to drag and drop items from these browser onto your floor plan, and etc. OK? Now I was talking about these windows, these dockable windows. So some of these com uh, concerns or feedback that we get is sometimes people mis misplace these, win these windows, or simply they close these windows, and they don't know how to get it back. Well, with V12, we've came up with a concept, or actually we integrated the concept of screen presets. So if I go into my View tab, I have now a new button, Screen Preset. If I pull down on this, I have what I call a couple of presets here. I have the initial configuration, so it brings up design to its initial state when I was working in uh, when I initially installed it, and I have other ones. So I have a split configuration. I even have the classic configuration, which some of you might find interesting, since it will bring you back to your classic mode of version 11. Okay, so that's there for you. That's accessible accessible for you. What's interesting as well is that if for some reason you would like to move these around and have a weird or any type of configuration that you prefer, you can save that configuration as you want. You can actually save that custom configuration. right? So if you close by, by mistake any of these windows, you can recall that save configuration by calling the custom button, and it brings up all your windows the way you want it to be laid out. I'm just going to go back and set to my initial state, and all my windows are redocked nicely to its original form. What's next? Error reporting tool. Now, this is a function that I've been, we've been thinking about for, for, for quite a while now. We want to have a way to capture more information, some of the issues that you might experience in the field. So now, whenever you come across some of these issues, uh, design will automatically prompt you whether you want to send uh, an error report to, uh, to 2020 technologies. So the more we get, or the more we collect all these error reports, the more we can analyze the stability or the, 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 the quality of the product. And we can improve on it and base, and base or further a development and further um, assessment or development functionalities around these issues that we've collecting from the field. So this is very key. And this is all in the effort to try to make as best as possible a product. Okay? Precisely annotate light position. That's, this is really neat, and it's just something that's been asked to me a couple times. And I'll bring up my uh, other design. So this is very, a very simple design where what I have here is a simple of set of recessed lights. Now, you, some of you might already notice that I have cross hairs. This is something that we've added to our lights from our room fur catalog. Why did we do that? So now that we have these cross hairs, we can actually locate the center of that light. And why is that important for you? To annotate the position of these lights. So just to give you a short demonstration, I go in the annotation tab, and I'll make use of our previous or our latest uh, functionality that we've introduced in 11.12, which is called the multi-dimension tool. So if I click this, and I zoom in, I select my line, my cross lines of these lights. With a simple click, I have now annotated the position exactly and precisely to their location in the floor plan. So why is this huge for you? Well, now that you can actually place these lights to your liking, you can actually show the position of these lights to your installation crew, to whoever, uh, to the person who actually has to position these lights precisely to your design specs. What else do we have under the hood for V12? Shaker door cabinets. Yes, we've added a couple of shaker doors for uh, within the sample catalog. You might say, this is not huge. We should have had this well. Yes, you're right. We actually took the time to actually put these shaker doors finally in the sample catalogs. So now it's available for you 
to use it if you're a sample catalog user. Sample E, sample F, and sample M. Additional interior doors. Yeah, that's something of a request we've been getting for a while. Is is uh, people saying that our doors within our room catalogs were kind of maybe deprecated? Well, we took note of that and we finally updated these. So if you go and navigate to your now called local browser, remember that it's no longer called the drag and drop. You can go and to the door section of the room catalog, and you'll notice that you have additional sections. Even in the interior doors, we have a couple of other new sections, and you, you can have doorways, single doors, interior doors, double interior doors, and even the ones that we've been asked a lot are the those beautiful barn doors. If I click on this, now I have the whole broad selections of barn doors that's accessible for, for you. Barn door case style, double panel, single panel, even shaker panels. If I select this, you'll see that it'll appear here on my information box. So that's for you to make use of your design. You can configure it. You can even change the color of these as you normally would do on any door styles previously. Yeah, I'm just clicking away just to give you an example of what's available for you within V12. Even Glassdoor, if you're looking for them, they're there. System requirements. What are the system requirements for V12? That's a question that I've been asked many times. System requirements for V12 are identical to system requirements from 11.12. So if your computer can run 11.12, it can run V12. And actually, it'll run better. Okay? And one interested, additional interesting note for V12 is that it can be installed right by side with uh, with respect to your current V11 uh, version. Even V10 or V9, if you have those, you don't have to un uninstall them. You just install V12 on the site. The system will, in will install itself automatically on the site. It will not crash your current uh, version. You'll be able to play with V12 independently. Just to make sure that if you bring a kit file and open on V12, you cannot reopen it in V11. So if you want to do some tests with these two versions, make sure to do a copy of the kit files and use those copy independently in V12. That's pretty much that's all the main functionality of V12. I hope you liked it. I hope you appreciate it. Don't forget to provide me with feedback. And if you need any training, and if you need additional uh, uh, articles, they're available on the Knowledge Center page. So that's available on 2020spaces.com. Again, that website is 2020spaces.com. Don't forget also that we have a community, a wide range of 2020 design users that are come and go and provide feedback within our community onto our forums to ask questions, uh, state any concerns, or you may even make feature requests. Oh, and take note that I'll be now uh, look and take in a close eye of any feature requests that you might have, so and I'll be responding to them uh, one by one. So that's a way, to, a good way to communicate with me if you ever need to. All right. What else we have? Oh yes, a, re a reminder: the VIP event again happening in Vegas. Come and join us if you're there at KBiz. Please. Make sure to integrate that extra day at the beginning of the week on Monday. Come and meet us. And if you haven't done so, please register, register on our website. Again, that website, 2020spaces.com forward slash celebrate. Register. Give us some information. There's a small fee uh, to register $25 that will be provided or, or given to Habitat for Humanity. So this is in no means will we be making any money on this event. This event is mainly for you. So if you want to come and meet us, this is the opportunity. And, ho and I really hope you do. Okay, you can continue to follow us on our social uh, network. So we have a couple of hashtags here, Tip Tuesdays, uh, hashtag Knowledge Wednesdays, and hashtag Sundays Reading. So if you want to learn what's going on the latest with 2020 design or even the company, please make sure to follow us on the social media. Okay, again, that website, 2020spaces.com. If you have any other questions, please reach me on the community and uh, I'll be glad to read you. With that, thank you very much, everybody, and have a nice day.